I like to read. A lot. This year I've read 63 books so far, which is pretty much right on track to hit my 115 book goal by the end of 2022. And since we're halfway through the year, I thought it would be fun to go through every single book I've finished so far this year and give you a quick one sentence review so you can hopefully determine if some of these books might be books that you'd want to add to your own TBR. There's a lot of books to get through, so I want to jump right into it, but I will add for any of my fellow stats nerds out there, I will be including stats for the first half of the year at the end of this video, so definitely hang out till the end if you enjoy charts and graphs as much as I do. Also, I'll be unboxing a really beautiful special edition set of two of my favorite books of the last couple of years at the very end of the video, so definitely hang out for that as well because they are just... <laughs> So beautiful. Hopping in my TARDIS, jumping back to January, starting with For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This book was so dull and predictable with zero twists and literally made no sense. One star. Next up, I read Monstrous, book one by Marjorie Liu. And this graphic novel, oh my God, the art, the characters, the story, absolute perfection. I've already pre-ordered book two, but I'm not okay waiting. I'm really not okay. <laughs> five stars. Next, I read Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant. This book is a love letter to science and exploration wrapped up in a mermaid-esque, gory, monstrous bow, and it's honestly something I didn't know I needed until I read it, but I definitely needed it. Four stars. Next, I read The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, my first foray into Brene Brown. And I'm sorry to Brene Brown fans out there, I'm sure some of you are watching this video, but I found this book mildly insulting to my intelligence and also mildly insulting to my humanity as a person who is non-religious. It just wasn't a good time. One star. Next, I finished The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. This is a deeply unsettling gothic horror that had me looking over my shoulder at the faintest sound with villains who can rival my favorite Doctor Who villains of all time, The Weeping Angels. This novel freaked me out in the best way possible. Five super creepy dolls out of five. Next, I finished The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. This is a passionate, thoughtful, and beautifully written analysis of American culture and religion and how they're tied to racism and the Black experience in America, and it is still so deeply relevant even 60 years later. Five stars. Next, I read Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. This book had really thoughtful eating disorder rep, though it was quite triggering at times, and a very interesting sisterly dynamic. But I must admit, I started to get irrationally angry at the number of times Choi used the verb to pad, as if all of her characters are actually cats in human clothing. Three people inexplicably and repetitively padding to the kitchen out of five. Next, I read The Power by Naomi Alderman. I love how this book held up a mirror to our society and how everything we learn and think we know about history and gender is based on a fundamental misunderstanding of how power manifests itself in human beings and what gender actually is, which is a construct. Four to five stars. Next, I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, and this was kind of trauma porny, kind of racist, and also kind of boring. Two stars. Next, I read Do Nothing by Celeste Headley. And appropriately, <laughs> I have done nothing to rate or review this book because I need to reread it with my eyeballs instead of with my ear holes so that I can properly absorb the information. Now we're getting into the books that I read as part of my 2021 Goodreads Choice Awards Winners Challenge that I like to do. You can check out that video here. First up was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Reading this book is like seeing your preteen cousin at Christmas and them telling you about every single inside joke they have with their best friend in one long run on sentence as you feel your final brain cell suffocate and die. One star. Next was The Final Girl Support Group, also by Grady Hendrix. This book was unevenly paced, poorly narrated, and honestly nonsensical. It also had racist undertones. One star. Next up was Broken by Jenny Lawson. Finally, I have found a 99% accurate representation of my brain in book form, and I absolutely loved it. So funny. Five stars. Next, I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Davey. This book was so poorly written and repetitive that I started to wonder if my ebook had glitches where sentences were being written multiple times when they shouldn't be. Spoiler alert, there was no glitch. Two out of five stars. Next, I finished The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. This is truly a love letter to the world, and I really enjoyed reading it. Four out of five stars. 
Then I finished Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and this was possibly the most annoying book I've ever read in my life. One star. Then I read Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe, and this felt like one of those samples you get of ebooks where you can kind of start to read the story, but it cuts off before you get to anything actually good. But I will say that the art is really pretty. Two out of five stars. Next up was our book club choice for January, and that was The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi. And this book was well paced, fun to read, and had a lot of really well done diversity, including some really great bisexual rep. Four stars out of five. Next, I finished Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney, and <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever hated a book more. One star. Next up was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I was very pleasantly surprised by this one. I did not expect to enjoy it, but I liked the characters, and I liked the ending. Three out of five stars. Next, I read Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, and this book is a heartbreaking exploration of grief and identity that left me sobbing like a little baby. Four out of five stars. Next, I read Empire of Pain by Patrick Raiden Keefe, and this was surprisingly super interesting, even though I had no prior knowledge of nor interest in the subject matter, which was the family responsible for the opioid crisis in America. Five out of five stars. And the last book for January was Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan. This was not a book for me, obviously, but as an adult, I found the pacing a little rushed and the world building a little sparse. And I also struggled to believe these characters that they were so young and yet so powerful and capable and multi-talented. Three out of five stars. Moving into February, I started off the month with The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward, and this was very creepy and unsettling and not at all what I expected. Four to five stars. Next was No Gods, No Monsters by Caldwell Turnbull, and this is a series of vignettes highlighting monsters who have come out of the shadows into the light. The story was quite grounded despite its fantastical nature, and the premise was really unique, but it was kind of confusing. Three out of five stars for a fellow Turnbull. Next, I read Sorrowland by River Solomon, and this was a visceral yet dreamlike blending of fantasy and horror that explores racism, misogyny, colonization, religion, identity, motherhood, queerness, and so much more, and it was absolutely incredible. Five out of five stars. Next, I read The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, and this was a bizarre urban fantasy that is definitely better enjoyed without knowing too much, with a diverse cast of flawed and infinitely layered characters, a terrifying monster, social commentary that hits you right in the gut, and clever prose. Five out of five stars. Next, I finished Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro, and this was a middle-of-the-road romance with so-so dialogue and one of my least favorite tropes of all time, but it did incorporate the experience of being a first-generation immigrant from Nigeria to Canada in what felt like a deeply authentic way. Three out of five stars. Next, I finished I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, bouncing between joy and suffering in that buoyant manner of children. Angelou tells of the highs and lows that defined her early years with a writing style that reads almost like a song. Four to five stars. Next was our book club pick for February, which was A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. And this book had solid characters, an interesting magic system, and an intriguing mystery, as well as a cute romance. But some of the larger issues that were touched on in this story weren't adequately addressed for my taste. Four to five stars. Next, I read Blood Feast by Malika Mustadraf. This is a collection of stories, and they are bleak, uncomfortable, upsetting, and frustrating, but that was their purpose, to shine a glaring light on the failures of the misogynistic culture that Mustadraf inhabited in Morocco in the 90s. Four to five stars. And my last read for February was The Undertakers by Nicole Glover. This is the second book in a series. It wasn't quite as good as the first, but because I'm invested in these characters, I enjoyed spending Spending time with them, even though the mystery didn't capture me as much as the mystery in the first book. Four to five stars. Moving into March, the first book I finished was Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, and this was immersive and emotional with stunning prose and strong characterization. I just loved it. Five out of five stars. Next, I read The Hidden Child by Rebecca Griffiths, and this book had no real intrigue, pretty awful characters, nothing really to redeem it in my eyes. Two out of five stars. 
Next, I read The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. While I didn't think this was a perfect book because I will never not cringe at the trope of an all-powerful, ageless, ancient man falling in love with a teenage girl who was alone and vulnerable. It was still an enjoyable read that made me sob a few more times than I am proud to admit, so four out of five stars. Next, I read 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis, and this was a really innovative book with a super creative concept, but it was also very depressing, and I struggled a little bit with the core premise because it was very misaligned with my own personal beliefs around non-human animal sentience, so I ended up giving it three out of five stars. Now we're getting into the books I read for my book talk challenge, which you can check out here if you're interested. First off, The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I spent hours ranting to my husband about this book, and those are hours that I'll never get back. And neither will he. <laughs> you can watch my whole rant in that other video if you're interested. Two out of five stars. Next up, We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book is pretentious, overdramatic, whiny, shallow, and nonsensical. One star. Next, I read The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. This book was surprisingly good. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. I loved the characters. I enjoyed the magic system. I was really pulled into the story and the whole mysterious dark academia vibe really worked for me. Four sexy, mysterious, morally gray magicians out of five. Next up, I read Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr, and this was exquisitely paced with distinct characters that I grew to love, connecting seemingly unrelated people and places and events, moments in history together in a really beautiful way, absolutely packed to the brim with sincerity and humor. Five stars out of five. My last March read was our book club pick for March, which was Pura Cow, edited by Witi Ihimera. And this collection brings together incredibly talented voices to reimagine the stories of Maori oral tradition in a variety of forms, from poetry to modern retellings and more. Not only did reading these stories pique my interest to seek out the original myths, but they also made me want to explore every single one of these authors. Five stars out of five. Moving into April, the first book I finished was The Maid by Nita Prose, and this was a very predictable mystery with pretty unsatisfying twists and cardboard cutout characters with possibly harmful autism spectrum representation existing solely to deliver very basic life lessons in blunt force trauma fashion. One out of five stars. Next up, I read The Memory Theater by Corinne Tidbeck. And while Tidbeck did a fabulous job of creating this otherworldly eerie vibe, reminiscent of the dark fairy tales of Brothers Grimm, this novel was just a bit too short and simple to fully pay off all those cool and creepy loans it took out. Three out of five stars. Next up, Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. The main character setting and overall concept had a lot of potential, but the plot was a bit plotting and the dialogue was repetitive with too many asides breaking the fourth wall to info dump the exposition. Three out of five stars. Next, I read A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman, and as a human type person with thalassophobia, this book was my worst nightmare in the best possible way. Just over 100 pages of heart pounding and horrifying suspense that kept me hooked even as I constantly wanted to put it down and walk away and never pick it up again, with an ending that I wish had left a little bit more to the imagination, but still overall satisfying. Four out of five stars. And my last read for April was our book club pick, Grey Bees by Andrei Kirkov. And this is a deeply human story about a man who is living in blissful ignorance of the politics involved in the war that surrounds him on all sides. A man who is just trying to survive and care for his bees. And it surprised me in the best possible way. Five out of five stars. A great pick if you're looking to read more Ukrainian authors. Moving into May, the first book I finished was Noor by Neti Okorafor. This is a magnificent example of Afrofuturism that explores the ways that capitalism and corporate control can destroy the lives of the human beings they purport to serve. Four to five stars. Now we're getting into the books that I read for my Reading Around the World Challenge, one book from every continent. You can check that video out here. 
First up, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Read this book if you love the gothic dark academia vibes of walking down a dark cobbled alleyway in the moonlight, in the rain, in 1940s Barcelona, as you're watched by a mysterious man in the shadows lit only by his cigarette before you disappear into a secret library of forgotten books. Five out of five stars. Next up, I read Love After the End, edited by Joshua Whitehead, and this is an indigiqueer anthology of speculative fiction about rebuilding on the ashes of an apocalypse, tending to the seedlings of a utopia. Four to five stars. Next, I read Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. This is a profound exploration of how toxic masculinity and colonization mirror each other in their ability to rot a community or an individual from the inside out through fear and hatred of the other. Four to five stars. Next, I finished Endurance by Alfred Lansing. Read this book if your idea of a good time is being on the edge of your seat, heart pounding, while following the real life story of 27 men surviving on polar ice in the middle of the Antarctic's Weddell Sea for two years in the early 1900s. Absolutely incredible, five out of five stars. Next, I read Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This memoir is profoundly eye opening, a window into the experiences of especially women in Iran in the 1980s and onward as they faced a rapidly changing society due to shifting political and religious movements and extremism. Four out of five stars. Next, I read The Yield by Tara June Winch, and this is a beautifully written gut punch of a book telling the story of a community of Indigenous people in Australia who were on the receiving end of colonization by white Christian missionaries, and it's told in three intertwining narratives, simultaneously personal, familial, and generational, and it left me an absolutely emotionally destroyed sobbing mess. Five out of five stars. Lastly, for my Reading Around the World challenge, we have the posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas by Machado de Assis, and this century and a half old novel is told in over 100 super short, hilarious chapters where Blas Cubas, a very unlikable character that somehow still manages to be endearing, tells the story of his life and death, his journey through philosophy, and comes to terms with his own humanity and morality as a ghost from the grave. Five out of five stars. Next, I read The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman, and this is a dark fairy tale retelling pulling from both Snow White and Sleeping Beauty that was a quick and enjoyable read, though not particularly memorable. I honestly think this would have had a much bigger impact on me if I'd read it 20 years ago. Three out of five stars. My last read for May was our book club pick, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, and this is a deeply moving semi-autobiographical novel told in the form of a letter, a lyrically written and often poetic bridge between a young man and his mother, who will never be able to read the words her son so desperately needs her to understand. Five out of five stars. Moving into June, the first book I finished in June was The Passengers by John Mars, and this novel lacked a subtlety and nuance that I think would have really served it. It was full of one-dimensional characters without believable motivations, and it just left me cold. One out of five stars. Next, I read She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Both point of view characters in the story were hard to root for in their ruthlessness, and the pacing and world building left a little bit to be desired. But I did really enjoy some of the secondary characters and the exploration of gender and sexuality in Mongol occupied China. I'm considering continuing on in this series. Three out of five stars. Next, I read Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book does not contain any brand new revelatory information about habit formation, but it is laid out in a really easy to follow, actionable way. Four out of five stars. Next, I read I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This book had a pretty unlikable protagonist and love interest, but there were some really sweet moments between secondary characters and lovely rep for the early stages of gender non-conforming exploration. Three out of five stars. My last June read was If Not Winter, Fragments of Sappho, translated by Anne Carson, and these are fragments of ancient poetry about love and beauty that are just as relevant and 
and evocative today as they were thousands of years ago. Five out of five stars. And moving into July, I have only finished one book in July so far, but I thought I'd include it here. That was Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mindell with timely commentary on pandemics and humanity's obsession with the perceived oncoming apocalypse, Mandel manages to tell both a broad and a profoundly intimate story with multiple point of views and a cleverly intertwining narrative. Five out of five stars. So there you have it, all 63 books I finished so far in 2022. Please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts were, if you agreed with me or not. Also, if you're adding any of these books to your TBR, I want to know. And of course, as always, if you have suggestions for me based on what I like, things you think I might enjoy, leave those down below because even though my TBR is thousands of books long, I am always willing to add more. <laughs> now, for all of you who are stats nerds like me, I will pop up on the screen screen all of the stats for my rating in 2022 so far. I try to track a variety of stats so that I can keep on top of my goals, my challenges for the year. For example, try and read a book from every single country. We're trying to read at least 50% books written by BIPOC authors. And the very last part of this video, for those of you who stuck around, if you did stick around, leave a book emoji in the comments so I know you're a real one. I'm going to do a quick little unboxing of a beautiful special edition box set of Madeline Miller's work, Circe and Song of Achilles. This was put together by Illumicrate. If you don't know them, check them out. I'll have a link in the description box. This video isn't sponsored. They're not paying me, but they did gift this set to me. I'm very excited because I love Circe and Song of Achilles. I gave both of them five stars, but they created a special box set and happened to be willing to send me said box set. And I'm so excited. Okay, let's go. I might need to go find scissors. Oh my god. Okay, it's still in the plastic. Okay, let me take the plastic off. Hang on. Here is the box set. Oh my god. Look at this thing. Like, excuse me? This is so beautiful. Oh my God. Okay, hang on. Wow. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm like staring <laughs> into the monitor like I'm being hypnotized. It's so shiny. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Just perfection. Like, I'm sorry. Look at these end papers. Wow. Oh my God, it smells so good. You know, you're a real book lover when the smell of a new book or the smell of an old book mm. just takes you to another place. Okay. Gorgeous. Let's look at the other one. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh my God. I think I'm going to cry when this one has the... These are beautiful. But I am obsessed with this and I'm very excited to put it back here on my shelf. I'll probably put it on this shelf because I feel like it goes with the vibe, you know? So anyways, thank you for hanging out till the end of this video with me to enjoy the excitement of this unboxing with me. Thank you again to Lumacrate for gifting me this box set. Please go check them out. They do book boxes. They do special edition prints of your favorite books. And they're just like super kind, awesome people over there. So definitely check them out. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. Y'all are the absolute best. Special shout out to my book club patrons. Our book club is amazing and I feel so deeply grateful to have an amazing group of people to read books with, to discuss books with. Y'all are awesome and I love our book club so much. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye friends. Yoda wanted to say hi, so <laughs> here she is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>